Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think we're a bit early. Um, it officially starts at 1030. But welcome to the AfricanMusicLaw.com show. And this is our second live stream. I'm super excited. My name is Miss Uduak. I'm the host and producer and publisher of the Africa Music Law Show and the website AfricanMusicLaw.com. The focus is to empower the African artists. And today, as part of that empowering, I've got a great panelist with me. We're going to the Middle East and North Africa, where we're going to talk about the business of music. One of the things that really, really interested me in doing this is the fact that often we find that we're talking about Sub-Saharan Africa and how exciting Sub-Saharan Africa is and the growth, but we just never seem to connect with our brothers and sisters in North Africa. I can't understand that. And after 10 years of covering a lot of, um, particularly Ahmed, one of our guest years uh, music, among others, I thought, you know what, we, we really need to be having a conversation, especially during this, uh, unfortunately, pandemic season. So first things first, let me just make sure you guys can hear me. Can anyone just let me know that you can uh, see us in any shape or form? Can anyone just confirm? Okay, I see some people viewing. Mm -hmm. Leave comments, let's know that you can see us. Let's see here. All right. That's okay, it looks like, yeah, I, I, I'm seeing more, more uh, views. Facebook people, where are you? Tell me you can see us. YouTube folks, confirm that you can see us. And I'm going to go check as well. And then we will officially start with introducing our guest. Let me check that out. We all are quiet. Yes, you all are quiet. That's OK. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm on my page just to make sure that Everyone Everything. can see us and that we are live. Okay, yes, we are live, so that's great. And cool. folks can see us. And also, let's just check the YouTube as well. Okay, and let's see here. Uh, Africa Music Law. Okay, and we are also live right now. Perfect, awesome. So let's get going and officially talk about the business of music in the um, in Middle East and North Africa. But before we get to do all of that, let me introduce my guests. We've got Karima Demer, we've got Ahmed Sultan, and we've got Hisham El Kabaj. I'm gonna bring each person individually to tell us who they are and what they do. So let me start first with doing that with Karima. So Karima, introduce yourself and give us just a brief history of, of your background. Okay, thanks for some Urak for for inviting us. This is such an exciting subject and, and very something that is very close to my heart. My name is Karima Damir. I am uh, currently based in Dubai. I work for Sony Music Middle East as an a and r and marketing. Um, I've, I've been working in the music business since 2011 when I started working for MTV Middle East. And basically I work with all types and genres of artists in the Middle East, North Africa, and sometimes even with other, other nationalities. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. So I'm gonna um, now introduce Ahmed. Hi, Ahmed. Hello, how are you? Finally, we talked. Great, Live. finally, right? <laughs> Long overdue. Yeah, that, yeah, I remember because the, yeah, I, saw, I saw the words you said online. Uh, you know, we, we know each other for more than 10 years now, remember? Yeah. And I think I was the first guy. Uh, oh, yeah. And I remember I'm the, the only one that you covered from North Africa. So yes, that's important for the rest of our conversation. And I think that it's because maybe the kind of music I was doing back then. Uh, yeah. but, but so, so my name is Ahmed Sultan. I'm from Morocco and uh, I sing in um, Derija in Moroccan. I, I sing in Amazir, it's a North, Afri North African language. I also sing in French and English. Yeah, I did some stuff in Italian, but forget about this. So and uh, so I do I do music videos um, 
songs and I produced my own video, my own videos and everything. So I started my country and trying to expose my music by by connecting with the with what I think was uh, essential back in the days, uh, West Africa. So so that's awesome. who I am. Awesome. And I think you know more about me and you're gonna and help you, me. And you've been so modest to our audience and all of the promo we've put out there. Ahmed has won so many awards from MTV to being the recipient of some major African uh, awards as well. So he's been super modest, but it's so, so good to have you and to connect with thank you. you. So, so much. Thank let you so me much. get, thank you. Let me get Hisham in here. Hi Hisham, how are you? Salam alaikum. Hi. Walaikum salam. Thank you for having us. Absolutely a pleasure. pleasure. Please tell the people who you are. Give them a just a brief bio. We try to be very brief. I manage uh, <laughs> artists and uh, Moroccan artists uh, based in Morocco mainly. I uh, had the chance to work with uh, with the guy who just spoke with you before, Ahmed Sultan. So I, I worked with him a few years, and I also have this heart of. Uh, artistic uh, coordinator uh, for uh, big festivals and events in Morocco. I do some consultancy. So mm -hmm. I'm more of the organizing and uh, promoting side, I would say. So that's, that's really brief, but uh, that gives a good idea. Awesome. So I'll add everybody and let's start our first conversation. And the first conversation is to just find out how you all are doing with your well-being. We've heard about how the pandemic is affecting other parts of Africa. I've not really heard anything with respect to North Africa. So how have you been adjusting to this pandemic and what's going on? Let's start with Hisham on that, actually. Uh, well, basically, uh, to be honest, I'm not going to be very positive about it uh, because uh, Morocco is known to be a very creative uh, country musically. But basically, we don't have a real uh, music industry as such. Uh, mm. We don't have uh, a lot of action from the state either. So basically, um, the way it works here is much more based on uh, private uh, or, uh, yeah, I would say private sponsorship, let's say, or private uh, actions. And uh, for the time being, because the people are more. Um, um, how to say the priorities are more uh, to save money and uh, pay the employees. You can imagine that at this, at this moment, uh, all the sponsors, the uh, advertisers are not really, um, how can I say, keen on investing money because uh, it's simply impossible and forbidden to do live events in Morocco right now. So at the moment, I would say we uh, the artistic scene as a whole, whether it's on the festival side or the artistic side, I think they quite a lot are struggling, except for those who are aware and uh, they develop uh, their business, like the online rights publishing and so on. But other than that, all the people who were signing on the live performances, which is really the main source of income mm, yeah it's not it's not um, the right time. so this is really affecting the whole pandemic shutdown is really affecting a lot of those live performances needless to say definitely i mean i think to my knowledge the last uh, uh live performance we had over here in morocco was probably mid-march wow and from that time no i mean there could have been some performances but they had they're probably underground or private parties. Other, other than that, festivals, events, and so on, nothing, nothing happened. Wow, wow. Karima, please add your voice. Let us know how you are dealing with this whole pandemic situation. For us really here in, in Dubai, uh, things started almost like the, the rest of the world mid-March. We started working from home. For the first two weeks, I think we haven't, so we did not uh, release any music. And also we had Ramadan, so we had to wait until after Ramadan. We started working from home and releasing music from home. And I think for us, it was it was a bit of like a new way of, of discovering things and releasing music and dealing with our partners, whether it be DSPs or artists or, or even like PR and stuff. We just learned a different way on working on our music. So since um, after Ramadan, we went back to, um, to normal, really. Wow. 
That's so interesting. We'll come back to the different way of working with your music that you talked about in a quick minute. Before we go to Ahmed, we have someone here um, who is a big um, fan of the African Music Law Show, and that's Roxin Igelige. And he says, welcome, my people. So you have a, a, a warm welcome from Roxin, who is actually also an attorney out of Nigeria as well, doing intellectual property and entertainment law. OK. <laughs> So Ahmed Sultan, um, how are you adjusting yeah. to, as an artist and artist standpoint, what's, how are you adjusting to this whole situation? Uh, you, know, you know, because I don't put a lot of projects uh, out, I, I, some, you know, sometimes I take five years to release an album. I know that it's not, it's not what all the, uh, the artists are doing right now with the streaming and the fact that you got to produce more. The way this, this situation affected my business is that, is that, um, I saw all the numbers, all my numbers online going up. People wow. are going back, consuming, yeah, even my YouTube subscribers, my Spotify and everything. And so I started to dig and see exactly what's going on on my, on my, on my, all those platform. Because, you know, when you're in a normal situation, you get distracted by many things. You don't focus on, 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 on your business. So now you get nothing to do except uh, working with a laptop and, and, and checking your assets because you know we talk about this all the time. Uh, uh, being able to to um, take care of your publishing, being also the owner of your publishing, and 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 so now you take care of everything. Like okay, how is the house right now? If if everything is everything uh, uh, well registered everywhere, do I collect well? Uh, how how my songs are, are, are pushed and everything. So we start. I started this work. A work that I would wanted to do like years ago, many years ago, but I was, you know, um, distracted by many things, new project and everything. So, and also, I think it's uh, it's um, it's different for me because uh, it's now I don't know my 17th years uh, year as as a professional, and uh, so it's different. I have I did some stuff and I preserved myself by this kind of crisis i don't know what what's going to be the impact what is the impact for for new for new new artists who maybe are uh, struggling more than me and i'm not known for touring a lot i, I mm. usually produce my own stuff in my, even my last uh, european show uh, european tour i produced it so mm, very interesting so there's, there's a good and a bad you know you know the fact of you know being indie being sure that that when you put one dollar in your business somehow uh, you, Maybe in a year after two years, you got this dollar gonna come back if you stay in the and you're able to yeah. struggle. So so and um, and I think that all the strategy, the strategy and the direction that I took years ago, are uh, um, preserved my business for during this time. So I'm amazing. not gonna say that I, that I'm not struggling, but I, we are struggling. But yeah, but what uh, you said is you've not. Other. So what it seems you're saying is you've not exclusively built your business around live shows. So as a result, you have a fallback and the way you've done all the digital infrastructure has actually helped you boost sales exactly. during this very difficult time. That is yeah, amazing exactly. to hear. That is really exactly. amazing to hear. And I hope and artists also, make notes. Go ahead. And, and also, you know, the way that you are adjusting, the, the way you are living, you know, the, 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 how much money you are putting in your daily life Mm -hmm. uh, how much? What is the cost of your day, of your life, of your of a day for you? So because I live now, I'm stuck in Paris. But but when when I'm in the village, when I'm in Morocco, the life there costs nothing for me. I have my own mm -hmm. studio, everything. My house, yeah. I don't pay, I don't rent nothing. So so I adjusted my you know, it's a, it's a business in reality. If I live in in New York, so how can I do that? It was almost impossible to to to, to the cost to of living. This. Mm -hmm. Cost of living. Sorry for mm -hmm. for for my, mm -hmm. my vocal. But you understand what I'm saying. Sorry for my yeah for my okay. English. Anyway. So no, that's you're, you're fine. You're fine. No yeah, English, non-English, everything is allowed here. We, we <laughs> yeah, international, <laughs> international brand, and we every all kinds of English and accents. We we will understand it. We'll break it down. If it's something that is maybe challenging, I'm happy to you know break it down for my audience a little bit more. Karima, I'm gonna go back to you. Because you said something in your introduction about how, as a result of the pandemic, you're moving differently. You all are moving differently with your music. Can you shed some light on what that really means in the context of the business of music for our listening audience? Well, I think primarily with the 
getting our artists used to um, to kind of do everything online, um, focus on on digital um, streaming, our PR, everything that was used to be, for example, invested in PR media now is moved towards digital. And, and also we started, we're getting used now to do uh, like press junkets via Zoom. We, we learned oh, wow. new ways and very different ways. And we, we, uh, we've done one um, for one of our Egyptian artists just um, after Ramadan around June uh, to launch her, her her new single. So we, we the pandemic actually taught us to how utilize um, the internet and utilize the technologies better um, in, in our day-to-day -day releases um, cycles. Okay, so let me, that's, I love how you talked about the technology part teaching to sort of further expand brands and helping to provide more visibility even to artists. I think that's a great transition to go to Hisham. Hisham, I always wonder why we never really know about North Africa. It still remains some sort of mystery to the rest of the continent. And I'm wondering your intake, having done numerous major festivals in North Africa with diverse artists from all over the world. Why do you think there's still this consistent um, barrier, if you will? Is it the language? What is it? What is causing this? We can't get to know our brothers and sisters and even the world as a whole still looks at that region in a very weird, uh, confusing way. I, I think that it's, uh, I think personally, I think that it's a problem of a, a gift and a curse at the same time because uh, we are uh, right next to Europe. We have the Middle East right next to us and we are, well, we are in Africa. So it's our wealth, it's the, the uh, this, um, this multicultural influences that give us the creativity. But I think that also at the same time, it alters our uh, priorities maybe and, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe locating ourselves and promoting ourselves with the right audiences. I don't know if uh, my colleagues share this point of view, but I think that it's, it's, it goes both ways. Uh, Ahmed is not, is, uh, is but, but Ahmed is, for example, when I said uh, in the introduction that uh, it depends if the artists are aware, if they dealt with their publishing and everything, Ahmed is one of the rare guys uh, here in Morocco who's been doing this from, since the start. I mean, since I've been wow. doing it like 2004. So he was ahead of his time on this side, but also on the, um, what can I say, uh, looking south, not looking north, like most of the artists would do here. So they would, their dreams would be more uh, making it in America, UK, Europe. And Ahmed, this guy was probably the first one and like I said, in 2004, he was telling me, I'm, I'm, I'd rather look south or Africa, or, you know. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Ahmed, then, let me bring you in on the conversation then. And, I, um, and I'm curious your perspective. Why, why is it such a challenge for us to get to know the Middle East and North Africa? But particularly, let's just zoom in on North Africa. Uh, I mean, based on your experiences, what would you say is going on? I mean, I mean, we cannot talk about this situation without bringing uh, the heritage, uh, the fact that North Africa got a close relation with the, with the, with France. Uh, with the, we got, we speak French in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. Uh, we have a, a diaspora based in Europe, and uh, and um, and some of our elites are um, um, trained and 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 they learn the. The, the, the businesses and everything in Europe and they are coming back home to do their own stuff. So this they have this way of this this mentality and they think like people over there. And so even sometimes for expertise for African problems, they bring European solution. And wow. sometimes it's not I mean I mean the same same problem in Ghana or in Nigeria. The, mm -hmm. The thing with, with Nigeria now or Ghana, they just have maybe uh they are ahead like ten years ahead. So, so, so we are just now following, and also um, it's uh, I mean problem of 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 of, of, of timing, being able to propose a music that's gonna fit and and your your ears like 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 you back in the back in back in the days when you heard Ya Salam, my, my first track, you felt you heard something that that, that was um, uh, how we say um, touch the soul. Like, 
Even though yeah, I didn't know words, yes. Yeah, I, I know, uh, universal, yeah, I know that stuff. So, okay, what is this language? And, and same for my friend, DJ Edu, based in the UK. He heard my tracks from Senegal. People from Senegal send them, send them the music. And, and, um, and also because, you know, and there's also some, some, some uh, uh, the way the world or the way they uh, structure the business. For example, uh, when I used to deal with the, maybe Coca-Cola or Pepsi, you remember uh, Karima, she, she can tell you that because all the big corporations were taking care of North Africa are based in Dubai. So you got to go to Dubai to talk, you know, to do to, to work in Morocco, to do a deal in Morocco or Algeria. It's crazy. You don't, you don't, you don't stay in your country. You don't, you don't go to Lagos, for example. And I also hated this word uh, sub-Sahara because it's not mm. our term. We never created this term. Someone created for this created this term for us, and we are using it. So mm. I, I rejected this sub-Sahara thing. From, mm. That's why you, you, we talk a lot about. I mean, you. I know you got to tell me uh, the definition of Afro being, but for me, Afro being is inclusive, not exclusive. We don't exclude. We include. Yeah, Afro uh, so being is, is is a particular um, kind of music you've created. But put a pin on it. Let me go to Karima, and we'll come back yeah. to that discussion. Karima, I mean, from a label perspective, and not just a label, I mean, you worked with Rotana Group among some major, major media companies in the Middle East period and North Africa. When you, uh, to your knowledge and your expertise, looking at sort of the strategy of which markets to enter into, what, what were the stumbling blocks of why North Africa particularly is not gaining that momentum elsewhere? Things are changing, but elsewhere where the rest of the continent can tune into the artists and the music industry and we can have cross colorization or just collabos as a whole. I think, I think it, it goes primarily to one reason um, and it's apart from Egypt, none of the North African um, countries has proper labels. So the industry is quite at its infancy right now. And like, like Ahmed and Nishan mentioned, a lot of artists are doing this on their own. Like you don't have a proper label in North Africa. Um, and I, to my knowledge, Universal, they, they manage North Africa from here, as well as um, Warner, they manage it from Lebanon. But no, there, is, there, there, there needs to be an expertise from within Africa to kind of manage that. And that's what, what's missing really. And, and like Hisham mentioned, there are, there's a lot of a lot of creativity in North Africa. I mean, I'm talking here on behalf of our sisters and brothers in, in Algeria and in, in Libya and in, 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 um, in Tunis, in Mauritania. There is there's so much creativity out there. Mm -hmm. And I think there, this is start this started flourishing thanks now to the digital platforms. Uh, kind of being based now I know that um so for Deezer and Spotify they they got launched in the region um, yeah. officially in two years ago actually around yeah. October November 2018 so things are changing and these are these they understood that North Africa has a as a, as a heavy weight when it comes not only production or also uh, audience wise so I know that yes. some, some of these DSPs they rely on their audience in North Africa which is amazing. So not only creativity, it's also uh, there is there is there is um, an ear for good music in North Africa, and, and because that's due to the um, the fact that we are we are we are we've been exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of um, cultures and like like Ahmed and, and Nishan said we're close to Europe. However, we still I think in the, the, in the new generation of artists are doing it their own way and they're showing how we belong to Africa more than anything else. We're very, very tied to Africa. Like if you, wow. especially when it comes to urban music, if I still, I'm still yeah. allowed to use urban as a term. Um, these artists, they basically, they, they rely a lot on, on Afrobeat and Afro trap. And, and like Ahmed said, we are better, we're following the steps of the rest of Africa wow. um, when it comes to music. And we have a few brilliant artists that some of them have worked with, some of them actually um, I'm working with, but they're like, for example, with, with a different label, we work with, with them on different um, projects. And now even like, for example, because for Sony, for example, we don't manage North Africa from here, but France now started going to, to North Africa and started actually signing artists from North Africa because they're saying that, that these guys are like on a different level. And especially on the urban side, there are artists 
from, from North Africa that are leading the European charts, like Saul King, like uh, El Artiste, like L'Algerino. These are artists that, that are actually very, very, they're, even though they're, they're Maybe some of them grew up in, in, in North Africa, then moved to, to like Ahmed, then moved to, to France, but they still true to their North African or African roots. Wow. You know, you mentioned something that Hisham, I'd like you to pick up on, which um, Karima mentioned and Ahmed also alluded to it. Ahmed said, look, when you look at North Africa, there's still the reporting on anything that's done reference back to Europe. And then Karima said, solutions need to be proffered from those within North Africa. So you are very much entrenched on the ground within North Africa as a whole. What are your suggestions for solutions looking at the framework of the event production uh, you know, industry that you really built? Because that's a big industry to, to employ artists, really. So yeah. what are some of the solutions that you think will make a difference where we're starting to hear more North African sounds on, 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 the, on the international and also just among us as fellow Africans? Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, like uh, Karima said, it's in a st uh, infancy state. But at the moment we have, and, and unfortunately, I, I, I really insist on this, it's really more of uh, those actions are coming from the private parts you know it's coming from people yeah. and initiatives it doesn't come from the states uh, but uh, but basically we we mentioned the introduction of uh, labels we who are not physically based here but that's they are looking at the market right now you have uh, a lot of people and i will not mention but you have also believed and uh, karima universal are opening an office here yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they did yeah and you have all the other uh, companies like uh, Spotify, Deezer, all these uh, uh, big streamers are, have also uh, an office here or are starting to build a team. So there is this uh, big interest right now for the Moroccan market, it's undeniable. But at the same time, I think that um, we need much more uh, initiative on the uh, institutional level uh, like for instance, you have the visa for music is a good example. You know, it's a good idea to bring people together and to promote and uh, to give uh, a platform to people who, most of the time, you know, they have also just an issue to get a visa to perform in Europe. So if you get them to play in Africa and Europeans coming to see them in a, in a closer way, bringing people together, you know, I think that starts building uh, and uh, uh, bridging the gaps, if you if you know what I mean. And uh, last but not least, I think that we need uh, to have this um, introspection in Morocco. I mean, from the local authorities, you know, and uh, starting to really try to build the real uh, infrastructures, give the right laws. But at the moment, this whole thing doesn't exist. I mean, it, it just like talks, I don't know, Ahmed will probably tell me if you, you, you agree with me, but most of the time we're living on a, on a system and a way of working for the music industry, which has been in place for the last 30, 40 years, except for the yeah. new generation, which is mm -hmm. online. So basically I think that, that the, the, the main secret for us is uh, to have the support from the state that we never got, basically first, but to have much more initiatives, like I said, which are uh, uh, bridging people together. And just to finish, I've, be, I've been working for the last few years for the Gnawa Festival, mm -hmm. which is instrumental, uh, not only because Gnawa is definitely completely rooted in Africa, it's, it's coming from the, the slave route, you know, the slave trade and everything, mm -hmm. and it ended up in Morocco and was developed here. So, that's a thing, but also at the same time, the festival really um, gave a mutual understanding between cultures like, and great artists, uh, jazz practitioners, I can say, what Marcus Miller, Wayne Shorter, and all these kind of people mm -hmm. who came here. And sometimes they tell you, oh, you sent me back to school. Because then they realize that it's the root of pretty much every kind of music. So 
being able to communicate on this wealth, on this uh, on this history with a big H, you know, but we're part of the human, uh, let's say, the transhumans. I don't know if you say this in in, uh, in English, mm -hmm. but in French, transhumans. Yeah, the trouble yeah. of the slave trade and the music. Uh, mm. That Morocco is uh, with Senegal is really, really in the middle of it. Honestly. Wow. And we're giving the information and spread out the information to people. Honestly. You know, I'm just soaking up so much information from you guys. That's why I keep saying, wow, because I feel like my world has just opened up a little bit more uh, to understanding that region. And I really appreciate you all. Before we go to Ahmed, here's a comment from one of our viewers, and that is Imanesh. Shigeron or Shigeron. I hope I didn't say your name wrongly, Imani. Please forgive, forgive me if that's the case. She says, I appreciate the Ahmed's perspective as Afrobian. We should have this vision of including and collaboration and bridging the gap. Thank you so much for your comment. Um, Ahmed, let's go back to you. And you are the creative, you are the artist. How have you been able to build from scratch up to where you are, considering the circumstances and realities of your environment that your colleagues Hisham and Karima also have talked about? Uh, you know, to be honest, is by making choices and 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 uh, and uh, making choices and having a, a, a goal, a vision. Uh, you know, I started with Hisham and Karima was was um, you know behind my MTV nomination and everything. They, this girl, Karima, helped me a lot. Because she saw she saw the potential and and she pushed and finally when she said Ahmed you have you got a nomination but you are a small guy you have only seven thousand followers uh, are you ready to compete with a million with superstars from the Middle East I said I don't care I'm just gonna put a strategy and we won twice yes so, and I so, remember that strategy also included I mean you were heavy on on all the media in the I West and in Africa now, yeah I remember that that was. That was crazy, and 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 she believed in that because she, she I mean, she she so like she felt okay. This guy is crazy. He's got something, and also I stick to my stuff. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend that I'm an entertainer that I can uh, change my style and everything. So it's it's um it's tied to 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 uh, to the, the the creator. You need a vision, but if you don't have a vision, okay, you you at least need uh, an environment with uh, proper rules. So that's why, you know, when you ask this question about the um, uh, live performances and everything, for me, it's it's only a part of the entire business uh, or, or Spotify opening and these are opening in, in, in our area, in our country. It just because now it's the new boundary because because the diaspora based in uh, the, the, the people who are, who are buying music in, 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 uh, in Paris, in uh, Brussels, in Milano, in, in Europe, who, are, who have this background, North African background, mm -hmm. I want to connect with the new guys from the source. That's why they saw a market. It's an opportunity. They don't care about coming because we are good or happy or, or nice people or whatever. It's a market. There's no there's no feeling behind this, this move. Spotify don't want to connect us. They want to make money. So they say, okay, guys, we have an opportunity. We have now those people, those guys from North Africa. They are able to produce uh, uh, good quality music and uh, visuals and content. So let's sign those guys, mm -hmm. take uh, five or 10 uh, uh, artists who are, who are, who are um, doing the who are buzzing and everything. Let's sign them, give them money so they are going to be able to produce more. And they're going to bring all of the guys, all the content behind them. They're going to promote the fact that Spotify is pushing and everything. So now we have those people in. Uh, uh, Paris, in person, and Brussels, and everywhere, uh, 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 discovering groups like uh, Shaifin, you know, it's a hip hop band from Morocco, or Karuki from from Egypt, or whatever, or another guy from Algeria. I don't remember his name. So, so, so that's business. It's a business move. You understand? And yeah. and, and also and also um, be, before all that stuff, my my reflection is okay how we can own the creation, how we, create, how we can own what we create. Mm -hmm. That's You talk about this all the time, being our own publisher, having our own ASCAP, having our own this, 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 and that. So, because it's always somebody else who's making money with our creativity. At least I would be able to 
uh, use my market. Okay. Take care. Take advantage of my market. So, and I got this stuff on my brain mm -hmm. since day one when I started the music. So, so I started the music as an entrepreneur. Even my my third album, I released an album, and I was like, okay, I don't have the capacity of doing millions of views, uh, but I think that I, I, I can I can be uh, offline in a better way. So I. I, I I manufactured 30,000 CDs and I put that on the equivalent of ShopRite in Morocco. And we sold everything in three months. We sold everything at $1. So, so that, this is the kind of stuff that we, we need creativity for, for because we understand more. We understand our market better than anyone. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if I answered the question if I'm just so, saying. So let me, let me summarize and crystallize what I'm hearing. Several things yeah. from an artist standpoint, if you are a North African artist watching this now or uh, when you do the replay, uh, I'm hearing you say, fundamentally first, you must have a vision and know where you wanna go. That's number yeah. one. Number two, yeah. you must have an entrepreneurial spirit. No one's gonna give it to you. So you need to be able to roll your sleeves and literally build from scratch up. If that mm -hmm. includes very grassroots levels of creating the producing, not only producing in the studio, but converting that to the format exactly. that the public is consuming, then you need to put yeah. in the work. And I think one thing that I will add, and then also build relationships, right? You talked about building the relationship with Karima, yeah. how she said, hey, you're nominated, but you're gonna have to do some work because I mean, exactly. people don't really know you, et cetera. But I would also add that one of the things I've seen you do on the build relationship side that I want to encourage other artists and industry professionals from North Africa to think about is, I think from my perspective viewing, yes, I actually used to read, speak and write French very well. Uh, now I just understand it more so and will speak it relatively okay. But when it comes to the Arab language, even though I was born in the US and I grew up in Nigeria and I would wake up every day to the prayer, you know, wake up prayer that would say, you know, Allah, et cetera. Wow. I used to, yeah, exactly. I would use it as my alarm clock or we call it the weary or, you know, but I'll use it as my alarm clock to go to school. That's about the only Arabic language I know from that childhood. Your region speaks a different language and you, Ahmed, have been very good at saying, okay, I'm not only gonna do Arabic all the time, I'm gonna also sing in English or French. So there's diversity that allows me to enjoy the experience even though I can feel the music. Because sometimes you feel the music, but then you don't understand the words. And then at some point it's like, okay, well, I'd really like to, I just happen to like your work. So I've continued with it. But many people are not patient per se to continue exactly. to listen in and out to, to words they don't understand. So I think I'll also encourage the industry from that standpoint to really think about you know, maybe flexibility with other languages. It could still be Arabic language mixed with English or French with other artists the way Ahmed has done over the and, years. And, and, and I just want to add, it's, it's our job to, for example, simplify some of uh, even the phonetic, the, the words I'm going to use in Arabic, so you you don't struggle to say those words. So like Ashkid or Yasalam. I love Ashkid. To, yeah, Ashkid's my favorite you know, song till date. <laughs> so, so word that you're gonna say and stuff, just feel and and we don't care. But you know, it's 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 a job. It's a work. I mean, we, we got to think about when we all, when we create. We, we try to do things that's gonna um, resonate on you uh, in, in different places. So so it's important for for for, for us as creators to, to 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 take it seriously. And also, just last stuff for the for the artists who are producing and creating now. Mm -hmm. Our market is now mature to consume. When we started, there's no digital, nothing. We were stuck between two areas, you know, cassettes and stuff. We still got life in, in our markets, you know, like uh, uh, in Sokolayun, for example, it's a souk uh, in, in Casablanca where all the guys are selling and buying albums and stuff. And uh, when distributors and some sometimes even pirates, you know, they take a stuff and just sell sell it like this. So so and now this transition is is uh, is is uh, was nice for us. We saw it, uh, we saw it live. But now, for those those guys who are now who got, who got all those tools and and platforms, it's it's easier for them, and, and they have and they have in front of them people who, are, who got more money to spend on music than us ten years ago or even fifteen years ago. Very very good, very good, Karima. I'm going to come to you, and I want to take it from where Ahmed talked about 
uh, ownership, right? Ownership of the work you create. Obviously artists and labels always have these challenges all the time, but let me approach it differently by saying, given the realities we currently know and have as it relates to the industry right now, in terms of not having the infrastructure that needs to be there for North Africa to really bloom, uh, whether you're talking about a, a, a major place like Morocco, how would you suggest that artists can still take the content they're creating as major leverage to broker deals that can allow them to, to still have um, ownership stake somehow in the industry as a whole? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, you're not necessarily owning the distribution platform, the West and Europe as a whole are owning and the Asians are owning that. But what you do own and what's in your hands, if we look at the, the uh, I know um, the Islam Quran is very similar to the, the Western Bible and the story of Moses and how he had the rod in his hand and he was still asking God to bless him. And it's like, no, you've got the rod in your hand, use it and strike the rock and get water coming. So with us, we have the rod in our hands and that rod is the creativity of the content. How do we use it to strike our own rock and get water come in where even though we don't own the distribution platform, we're still looking out for generations to come? I think it comes from like what Ahmed said, it comes from, from, from the artist itself, himself or herself, they need to have that kind of vision. And I think what the, the, the industries, um, kind of part should be in or even like people the, the bigger like the bigger circle of creators whether it be it like lyricists producers there needs to be a kind of education because a lot of artists and music and, and music makers creators are not educated when it comes they don't even know what's the difference between a master and publishing and they could actually they have a lot of other areas where they can um, have uh, gain more money and produce more and cre create more. People like Ahmed has the, have done this on their own and they went and researched and worked hard to where he got. Um, and I think um, it's all about just going, I mean, now we have a, a, the globalization of things, like an artist from, I don't know, from Morocco could be signed to a label in Russia, if that works. If the music exactly. and if there is if there is some um, uh, you know like com uh, co uh, compatibility when it comes to vision and, and style and, and music and we have like uh, for example like we have signed some artists there from Morocco while we we only manage Middle East but however we believe that there is so much creativity there that we went and and worked with some people there um, I think it's all about just researching working hard um go don't ever like feel feel um ashamed about asking questions there are a lot of forums there are people like you the people a lot of people around that are willing to help and it, it's 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 the um it's kind of it's a du the duty of the industry to kind of educate these young creators wow very, very good. Thank you. So I, we have a comment here from Imani and she says the diversity is a source of creativity. Absolutely agree on that. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what I want to do now is sort of start wrapping this up by going to your individual careers and talking about how you've gotten to where you are. And I think I want to start that conversation with Hisham. Hisham, everybody wonders how do you break into the event production industry so just give us a pathway of how you were able to break into the industry and get to where you are well, as briefly as possible but just walk us through some of the steps you've taken basically i was supposed and i'm saying supposed because i didn't uh, i didn't finish my thing but uh, i was supposed to do some law studies in morocco but i uh, had this opportunity to join the british council mm. in morocco this is and uh, uh, as uh, as Ahmed said, you know, when uh, when somebody and uh, uh, see your potential, they can grab you and uh, and believe in you, you know. And this is what happened with me. So I started um, taking care of a project, cultural projects for the British in Morocco, and I mm -hmm. was um, I say uh, booking British artists and incorporating them into big events in Morocco. So. They wouldn't have to pay, but it was no choice on the British side to bring an artist and give him a platform and exposure, you know. And uh, thanks to this job, I was able to discover a lot of uh, 
Moroccan promoters, but also artists, such, such as uh, and at the time he was requested by this is first album. And uh, it was what Moroccan will be done for the final. A big movement of creativity with uh, with uh, urban and uh, rock and even what they call fusion music, which is a mix of uh, Moroccan uh, sounds, but with uh, Western influence, if I may say. Um, so with this movement, I got to to, to know uh, a bit more my country and the type of music it was producing. And at the time also, uh, the, uh, all these uh, hip hop uh, rock movements were very underground not mainstream, uh, no no radio for the youth at the time, there was no hit radio. And it was like a sort of uh, activist side, mm -hmm. which led me to discover this word. And mm -hmm. then one thing led to another. Oh. Ashke and Hoba Hoba, um, I mean, Moroccan artists who were uh, up and coming and who were doing quite well. And through them, I also, uh, got to um, to get to 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 know the the other side of the of the machine. I mean the producing uh, events and so on. Uh, because I had uh, an, an interesting network at the time of uh, British European artists. I was able to work with these big events as a consultant at first. And when I was able to deliver and gain their trust, I I um, I was uh, hired. By those uh, big events, so wow. that really uh, a sort of uh, it was a that lucky, is, path, mm -hmm. but very fortunate. That is awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in the waiting room and bring uh, the other guest uh, and ask the same questions. And then when I'm done, I will invite you all for your final closing on how we can serve you and help you uh, with your business in light of you sharing some of this great knowledge with us. So. Let me get the next person on here. So, Karima, you heard the question. So why don't you tell us um, how you were able to break into the industry and work with some really formidable brands to get to where you are? I think it was, um, I started my, um, my career in Dubai um, in the entertainment um, um, sector. So I worked for, for a TV network where I used to do programming for TV. Then I had the chance to work for MTV in programming. And then um, I am like, like Hisham and I had said, some pe people, my, my superiors, my management believed in me and they saw my passion for music. I used to know everything that is, that is happening, uh, all the up and coming artists and stuff. So they said, Karima, why don't you take over the, there was, there was um, a, a position uh, for grabs um, as, as talent and music manager. And that's what happened. I worked with MTV for, as a, as a talent and music manager from Middle East, North Africa for five, actually almost six years. And, and until the, the channel had to shut down, unfortunately. And I decided not to go back to TV. And I said, I want to go and pursue my my passion, which is music. And I was given the opportunity to work as A and R and a publicist in um, NBC, which is one of the biggest networks here. So I worked with their label called Platinum, and that's where I'm really I, lo I learned a lot of stuff. I learned a lot of stuff about A and R, about uh, artist uh, PR, artist marketing. And then I moved uh, from then I moved to um, to Rotana, which is the biggest label in the Middle East. Uh, and then back in 2017, I was I had the chance um, uh, and uh, of be, being believed in again by by people in in, in Sony, and then they gave me a, a position of ANR and marketing, where I'm actually working and doing my passion every day, and I I'm very grateful for that. I, I've worked with a lot of artists, especially artists from the region. Since I've been working in MTV, I've I've, I've noticed that there were no platforms to support mm -hmm. local artists apart from the mainstream artists that have been there, but all these indie artists are coming, they're doing things that are, that are different, they're modernizing than Arabic music in general. They're, they didn't have such platforms. I know in, in North Africa and particularly in Morocco, there are more radio stations and TV stations that are encouraging those people. But 
in the rest of the, the Arab world, these, these artists have to, to, to hustle a bit. And I, I've, I've always wanted to work with those artists and, and as being part of uh, what, what I do now is working with those artists, um, working with them, marketing them, helping them build their image. And it's such a fulfilling um, job for me because I, I, I really feel happy and fulfilled when I help some of those people and those young creators um, achieve their goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I wanted to mention, just add on another thing, just to 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 um to all those artists in North Africa, and particularly in, in Morocco and, and maybe Algeria and Tunisia as well. They're, they're, they should be so proud of themselves because they have, especially in urban music and and, and like Afrobeat, like someone like Ahmed creating this genre and just going back to his roots and and being so proud of them and working hard to to get to a level where they are now and and like so many artists are there their number one um, streams come from Europe or from from different parts of the world because they manage to be the ambassadors of of their their music and their culture and they did it without any infrastructure wow. so that's really an achievement and I I have a lot of respect for a lot all of them absolutely and it's a story we seem to hear across Africa with the exception of South Africa that we keep seeing this pattern keep repeating itself, even with the whole Afrobeats movement. And somehow our artists are able to get on that global music map, which is amazing. And shout out to the industry people behind them across the entire value chain, people like you, people like Hisham, who are giving visibility, who are helping shape and mold a lot of this artist as well. So thank you so much. I'm gonna put you in the waiting room and then invite Ahmed to come join us. Ahmed. How are yeah. you? So, so you heard the question. Please share with us. And now let's zoom in on that Afro BM that you talk about as well. Um, how so, are you breaking to the industry and the whole Afro BM discussion you've, you've been sharing? So I've been always close to to. I mean, I mean, I started music by accident. To uh, to be honest, and uh, because I was doing, I was surfing, playing guitar, and some of my friends uh, from um, from uh, Gabon and Congo. They signed to a big label to Sony in Europe, and and when when they, they they heard that I was playing music, playing just guitar, they said, okay, why? I mean, play some guitar for us because we're working on an album and stuff, and 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 and, and I got into the industry like this, and and, and at the same time, I, w- I was selling saffron and argan oil. I mean, I was selling oh. spice just once a year and I was just leaving, I was just doing nothing, just surfing, Got a, I was graduated and, and just surfing. And, and after that, step by step, I started to discover the relationship between artists and, and, and their bosses mm-hmm. at the label. And I, okay, so, so, and all the fantasy the ideas I got in my brain was, that, all that stuff was not true. It's, 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 a, it's a tough world. It's business first. Those guys are selling chocolate, selling uh, water. Is, they are selling music like this, and I started to learn. And because my business, because I was doing my own, my, doing my own business, that was a word that, that I was that I was understanding. I was I was aware of that this kind of thinking. So I started. I was saying to myself, okay, one day if I do music, I'm not gonna do this kind of mistakes my friends are doing. Mm. So I learned through through them. And this band was a, a French band called Aphrodisiac. You know, they did a, they got a huge success in two thousand two and three. So anyway, just after that step by step, they encouraged me to to do music and stuff. And 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 what I wanted to do while producing my first album is being sure that all the aspects of my life and personality is going to be represented on that stuff. So the surf side, the Amazigh side, the village guy, Morocco, everything. Even if, I mean, I don't care. I was not thinking about success or whatever. That was not, I was doing my stuff. So, and and, and back in the days, uh, one small label just uh, opened in Morocco called Platinum Music in Casablanca. I mean, they signed artists for two or three years and after they shut down. So, so and I signed the license deal because I, I learned from the experience of my friends in Europe. So I signed a license deal. So I owned my master and I signed a license for three years in Morocco. So when they crashed, I took back my stuff. I got a budget to produce and everything. So you understand when I started, I started with all the knowledge uh, um, I have, um, I gained from, from my experience with those guys. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, 
after that, you know, trying to be true to who, who I am and everything, I, I started to create thinking about something like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not from Europe. I'm from North Africa, but I'm not from the Middle East. I'm not from, okay, so Afro, Afro Arabian. And I started with this stuff, Afro being. Mm. So Afro was my signature. And, and I tried to, to, to give to Afro um, uh, like an artistic definition for mm. years. But I stopped, to be honest. I mm. stopped to try to, try to give this uh, diff, an artistic definition. For me now, uh, uh, to be an Afrobean artist, it's to be it's a, a, a continental and geographic definition. If it's when you are from a country that is in Africa and got Amazigh or Arab as official language. Got it. That Got it. Is, mm-hmm. That's what I prefer. Yeah. To be like we say, francophone countries, anglophone, lusophone for Portuguese. So let's talk about Afrobean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Arabian, Arabophone countries in Africa. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 kill this 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 sub-Sahara whatever. That's I'm from an Afrobean country, like many others, like guys in Algeria, and Sudan, whatever. So so the, now I'm calling myself an Afrobean artist, like all the guys from my country. It's an inclusive inclusive word, and it's important for me. So I'm then just. Uh, anyway, after the, the release of my first album in 2004, the first destination I went after Morocco is Senegal because Senegal was the number one uh, francophone urban country for for hip hop. I, I went to Dakar. I did two collaborations there, and straight after that, Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And Nigeria yeah. and and being Sound so turn YJ was just some of the things, yeah. Yeah, well, J Femi Kuti. Right. Uh, I mean, I mean, many guys, and I, I know a lot of artists. And, you know, it's just they don't have. I don't have time to work with all those guys, and I don't want to treat each collaboration with the, all the respect, like Omar Wumi, Dija, uh-huh. yeah. uh, Tubaba, Tubaba. I mean, you know, we have those those instrumental, you know, somewhere in our emails, and okay, yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna collaborate soon. So anyway, so even guys from uh, from 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 Ghana, you know, Stone Boy, Wiala, and yeah, Wiala, so, that was a really good one you did with Wiala as well. Yeah, and it's crazy because you know it was for the twenty fifth uh, anniversary of of Western Union, first time in their history that they're gonna use a North African artist mm. for the to promote uh, their their business. So as anyway, so that song with Wiala. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That, that was Power the soundtrack. Of, yes, it was a, 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 an endorsement from them. So, so I've, and 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 watching the evolution of the music in Nigeria and Ghana was, uh, I mean, exceptional, wonderful for me because it's like you know, like uh, be, being in the future of what's going to happen in your country. So, like you're you're watching, exactly, you know, watching what's going to happen in your country. So you just have to. You know, I, I I started to think about endorsement deal, about all those uh, you know one eight stuff, and uh, with with R, R Kelly and and uh, Two Face and uh, Navio and and so I was I was watching those those stuff, and I was almost a part of that because you know I signed with Rockstar for a thousand. Yes, I remember uh, that uh, signing as well with Rockstar. Yeah, Are they yeah, still in yeah, business, Rockstar? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Even Rockstar TV now. I think the, uh, some 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 activities remain in Tanzania and Kenya, but yeah. uh, everywhere the continent. Is, is 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 now off but the thing is i was watching that so that's why i was living in a different area living in a different area i was not watching what's going what's going on in europe or even in my country i was watching what's going on there because that's gonna be um, my future in my country okay. so i was watching i was watching that the first the first move the first nomination of of tubaba uh the mtv mm-hmm. and yeah and then the bench p square stuff and uh, all Amide, everything, whiskey like blowing up, you know, the split between uh, between uh, uh, um, Don Jazzy and and uh, and uh, and uh, yes, <laughs> and you've been a subscriber to all the articles I write, and you follow yeah. it so religiously as well. Yeah. And I was yeah. there. I was I was also there even when I yeah, was promoting and those experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I mean I mean if you don't really love uh, um, the, I mean listen. You gotta be tr- honest. If you love your continent and if you really want, if you think as a Pan African, mm. only through I mean, the, the, the honesty is gonna save you, because mm-hmm. you cannot talk to to a, to a different part of the continent without knowing what's going on over there. Because well, you're gonna I- do the same, you know, you're gonna do the same mistakes that all those guys coming from 
coming abroad and like, hey, I love your music, you know, and they start to dress like crazy guys. And anyway, so I think you understand my point of view, but I, sorry. I get I get your point. You're a true creative. So true creative <laughs> flows. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. creative flows no that's fine just make sure you write music for us from this session right since we've allowed you to flow <laughs> I, got an, I got an ep coming soon don't worry okay well first i want to thank each one of you and then i'm going to bring you individually so you can tell us how we can best serve you as well uh first thank you so much for your time thank you for sharing this is just the beginning of more conversations i want to have more and more and more on this uh, and see how we can link up uh, Karima, you talked about that educational factor. Same with you, Hisham and Ahmed. There's some Nigeria just, um, we just had one of our colleagues, music executive, who I actually brought on the first live we ever had. His name is Bond, Bond Stanley Bibo. And he has a new book out on, on the music industry specific to Nigeria. So if there's a way we can link up, I'm all about always connecting people to link up to get that kind of book to as many people as possible on the ground in North Africa, Morocco, please. And we'll have the discussion right after as well. So you guys, please wait in the in the um, waiting room when we're done, don't go anywhere because I wanna have that offline um, so we can talk about that. Um, but I was just gonna um, say, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for your time. I deeply appreciate it. This is the beginning of just so many conversations because I'm determined to break that wall. I want to get to know my brothers over there and sisters, and I want them to know me as well. And um, so that way we can truly come together, put our heads together and see how we can elevate our people and our continent and get our music globally to the world. Absolutely. So having said that, let me, um, let me have the lady go first, Karima, and tell us how we can best support you and your career and what you're doing. What can we do to, to further help you uh, be the, the great, strong voice out there for us? I think it's just by, by all believing in each other, supporting each other. Um, also, just, just actually really being part of this movement like, just makes, makes us more stronger all of us and i think it's just like like you said earlier just learning more about each other discovering each other and interacting with each other will help me and help everybody else because helping me is helping helping the rest really awesome and thank you so much thank you it's, it's been a pleasure having being with you here my absolute pleasure thank you so much everyone go support karima karima what is your um what is your social media handles where people can find you? And, and I only have Instagram because I'm a very okay. visual person. I'm, I'm fashion is my second passion. So uh, it's at it's Karima Damir and or it's at uh, K U K U um, L I C O U S Cookalicious. Where did that Thank name come from? Is that from Beyonce's? <laughs> I'm too. You know, I was, no, I it's remember. actually actually one of my best friends who used to work with me at MTV back in 2011 when Instagram just started. She's like, let me create it for you. And I never changed it. Oh, how cool. I kept wondering. I said, oh, is that from their song way back? You know, I'm too. Yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. yeah. that. So yeah. 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 That, yeah, I'm African. So I, I own that. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. OK, please uh, stand by in the waiting room for a quick Thank discussion on, on that next step forward. OK. Um, and let's uh, have Hisham. Hisham, thank you so much. How can we support you with your event production company and all the things you're doing? How can my audience and, and me support you in what you're doing? I mean, uh, the most important thing I said, it's all about diversity, getting together and sharing. So please reach out if you have any idea to, to do things here or back in your country. But the, the main thing is really to share. And I think it's also linked to what I said also, it's also about educating each other, having a greater mutual understanding, knowing what we what we are about as human, but also as professionals. And I think that, well, that will help a lot and uh, also fight a lot of um, our uh, stereotypes and prejudgment we, 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 may, we may have, you know, and I think once, once you overcome all of this, I think it becomes uh, easier and clearer. So please reach out to us and we're here. 
And, and what is the handle that people can find you? Where can people find you if they're interested now to connect with you? Oh, so it's Facebook with my name, as you can see it on screen. Uh, you know, on Instagram, it's Insta Hisham, in one word, Insta okay. Hisham. Uh, All right. So those are the two main ways, and uh, welcome to everybody. Thanks. Hisham, let me crystallize it even more, um, get more gr granular with the support part of it. You do event productions. Do you always, or many times, I'm sure, have need for artists to to yeah. perform? Okay, so artists, if you're listening, both locally in North Africa, starting number one there, reach out to Hisham, whether it's to be opening acts or if you're a major act out there, reach out to him. You'll never run dry of needing talent. Um, on the rest of, for the rest of the country, West Africa, um, South Africa, every Central Africa, reach out to Hisham uh, managers, you know, labels, reach out directly to him and he's already given his, his contact and Facebook. And then the second one on the educational level, if you ever have uh, music education events that you are organizing, please let me know. I have a lineup of really wonderful people, including the one I already mentioned that can help come in and do that uh, music education on that very basic level as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Absolutely. My absolute pleasure. All right. Let's get the creative to join us. Ahmed, the floor is yours. So tell us how we can support your music and support your work and things that you're doing. The girls speak too much. I talk too much. Okay. I know. So I'm going to be. It's fine. Look, so I'm a talker as well. So there you go. So, 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 no, listen, honestly, I love the thing that Hisham just said, it's you know, about stereotypes and all that stuff. It's like, okay, let me, let me, let me tell you my story or our story. Don't hear it from other part of the world. You know, when I heard about, when I went, when I took my, my, my flight, my, my ticket to Nigeria, everybody was saying, man, be careful. It's dangerous. Boko Haram, ba ba ba, all this. I went there, nothing. People are working, doing their stuff, trying to bring food to the, on the table to the, the kids and stuff. I connected with guys with Kenny's music and I, it was oh, yeah. vibrant. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. It was cool. Like it was like Morocco or Senegal. Mm -hmm. so, but, but, if, but if you listen, uh, if, if somebody want to come to Morocco, maybe you're going to hear about terrorism, Islamism, mm -hmm. stuff like this, because they say about us. So let's talk together. We are all able to name American artists, but no one can name 10 Moroccan artists so true. from Nigeria. So so that's the stuff. We got to trust each other, talk each other, and just let me tell you my story, and I will be happy to listen to hear your story from your own, I mean, your yeah. own experience. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's the, that's the stuff. And and uh, uh, at Sultan Ahmed on Instagram, if you want to hit me, just talk. And if you need anything in North Africa, I can, you know, like always, just it's not even about the money or about doing things together it's about if you have so if you want to do something in north africa and you need resources uh, experience uh, expertise uh, reach out so i'll be absolutely. happy to, to talk and share exactly so so that's my my last awesome. words awesome okay please stand by in the waiting room and um thank you all everybody for watching we really really appreciate you Thank you so much. It's been real. Until next time, I'll catch you all in the next live show. And of course, please share this with everybody. And thank you to Roxanne Igelige and Imani Shegron for joining and, and giving some really great comments. I really appreciate you all. Until next time, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.